Welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, a show about weirdos, with your hosts, John Fahey, Aaron Peter, and Matt Brutzon. Hello folks, welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, it's a show about weirdos, doggone it. My name is John Boy, and it is John Boy time. Your host, John Fahey. Joining me as ever, the be-all, end-all, Ken doll, Michelangelo's David Duchovny. Stop whatever you're doing. It's John Boy time. Yes, correct. Thank you. Uh, as I was saying before you so rudely interrupted me, the head of the Pipe uh, Hitters Union, uh, uh, Mr. Aaron Joseph Pita. That's me. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm just <laughs> confirming that it's John Boy daylight savings time. That's exactly right. An extra hour of John Boy in your life. Yeah. Starting uh, now, oh, uh, and I am I am a, 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 a provisional member of the the head. No, you are the head. the head. The head of the pipe pipe hitters union. The That's you. Hard pipe hitters. Uh, the hard pipe hitters union. That's exactly right. Hey, well, I'm just happy to be here. That uh, is, of course, from the Mensinger brothers, all four of which listen to our program. Now, do they wear one trench coat? I don't know, but I know that they uh, they're definitely you know. Um, Trench coated dues paying that. members of the union themselves. Yeah. And uh, we gotta uh, we gotta get some Well you gotta live better work union, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Raise raise these... the standard of living. Yeah. And speaking of uh, raised standards of living, mm. to your right, my left, handsome Matt Brousseau. Oh, hi. How hi. are you? Great. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? You wanna join this union we're forming? I love you. Aaron's yeah. in charge. It's a blessed union of souls. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I mean a lot of unions are. Yeah. How what were we just swigging down there, Matt? Um, this was a Pliny the Elder. You can't tell by the glass. No, no, no. That's a Stella glass, but yeah. it'll work in a pinch. Aaron brought in some Pliny the Elders. It doesn't taste good. Uh, but... It tastes... <laughs> I just, I'm just fucking with you. It was a very nice treat, and uh, I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> oh, oh, I... I uh, uh... Um... Speaking of uh, beer and friends, uh, shout out to Creature Comfort Brewery in Atlanta. Our friend Amanda there. Oh. And her friend, Matt uh, Christensen, who uh, we did a suggestion for his birthday on That's our right. Patreon. That's right. If you're not a Patreon subscriber, please subscribe to that. We talked at Maddie's suggestion about the Georgia Guidestones. Oh, hell yeah. Had a lot of fun. Talked about that. Uh, that crazy duck. Crazy W2 duck. Yeah. Uh, WW2 duck. Uh -huh. uh, it was a really fun episode. Yeah, it was really good. And uh, also, Matt, Maddie is uh, at the Kimball House, and apparently all those owners of that fine dining establishment listen to this program. Is that right? And we huh. would like to say hello to all of them, and Fantastic. as well as uh, the bartender there, Tanner. Hey. Another, another big fan of the show. Tan man. It's like we got a fucking whole crew of uh, service industry folks in Atlanta listening oh, to the man, program. We are in the wrong city. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. You know? Um... And, uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun there. I want to remind everybody, please subscribe to us on uh, Instagram. Profiles and Eccentricity on there. PP Podcast on Twitter. And right. also on YouTube. 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 Go on the YouTube. Yes. Uh, you can see our faces. Uh, give a thumbs up, a like, uh, subscribe, hit the little bell in the corner. I, I don't know what you're supposed to do on there, but do all do of it. Do all of those things. Leave a like and a comment. Yeah. It will help us mm -hmm. feel better. Yeah, and eventually I think we'll make money from it. I, yeah, I guess. We'll you know? And that's good. And it'll allow us to, you know, make more content. It'll allow us to share the the great word of this wonderful hard pipe hitters union Yeah. Uh, with the world. Yeah. It's about time the crackhead started a union. I, I think so. I can't mm -hmm. believe it's taken so long. You know? All yeah. The, all the millionaires and billionaires. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking you once again, um, yeah, the, uh, Brendan Mensinger did make that beautiful logo of the cross blowtorch and pliers. Yep, we're gonna have to make some apparel. You're gonna have to do something with that. It really looks so cool. Yeah. Uh, also, shout out to Secret Headquarters Comic Book Shop. Yeah? Just, I love them so much. They love me. We have good times talking about comic Aww. books and movies. Dr. Doom. Give, you give them your fic? Oh, I have not, I have not performed a live, uh, no, I'm just saying, just slide it, you know, you next just, time you buy something, slide it with the money. Just slide it there, yeah. 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 Just, Maybe I'll get the pros tattooed on my arm. He has a tip. <laughs> on a scroll. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, recently at, uh, at Robot Party, a fine, fine show here in Los Angeles, I performed a, a dramatic presentation mm -hmm. reading of Spider-Man Graduation, my mm -hmm. own personal Marvel Universe erotic fan fiction. Yeah. Fan fuck. 
fan fiction, fan mm-hmm. fiction, uh, fun fiction, fun faction. Yeah. Uh, and it was really just a a disgusting old fun time. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, It'd be great if you uh, you know you could do it like um you know set you know to uh, we had it set to the Marvel music v- yeah, live, which yes. was very 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 fun. Yeah, scored to certain iconic themes of the Marvel universe. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you should so, just have it go over all of Inagata De Vida because <laughs> like, yes, it's a 20-minute yes. track. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a 20-minute. Uh, and it also builds to a fun climax. And hey, it's a pretty fun climax. <laughs> I, know, I know we're all about that. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> well, not me. I have trouble. <laughs> uh, and if you are a member of the Patreon, if you're yes. a patron of our Patreon, you had a, uh exclusive first look at that a couple weeks ago. That's exactly right, Aaron. Um. So that's uh, another reason to join the Patreon is to hear some nasty fucking perverted oh, shit. God. Oh, fuck. <laughs> if that's, if the, everything else is not reason enough, that's another reason. Yeah, that's a good reason. I think so. Now, Aaron, I uh, I believe you got uh, <sighs> you got stung by I... the in, in, inspiration, uh, and you were going to do a profile, and you, you pivoted. I did. At the last minute. I did. I, I pivoted. I was recommended a profile by somebody, uh, uh, and then uh, I was like, oh, cool, I'm going to do that. Because I'd heard about it, and, but then I just found this one thing, and I was like, "Oh man, this is crazy!" And uh, and I just spent some time, and I, I did a little bit of research, mm. a little bit of me search. Oh, oh okay. god! And uh, it's really fun. I think you guys are gonna <laughs> like it. This is a. Uh, you know, we just saw them in uh, 1917, just took home a couple of Oscars, a couple of Academy Awards. Mm-hmm. Somehow not for Best Editing, though, because I guess they made well, no edit. <laughs> there are, yeah. but... <laughs> yeah. There's not an edit in the book. There's <laughs> one <laughs> fucking camera <laughs> the whole time. They didn't even really save all the money on one of these editors. Was this a live stream? <laughs> uh, it's a World War One motion picture. Yeah. Uh, a lot of, not a lot of motion pictures back then, too. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. Uh, nor, not color or sound either, Weird. but somehow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Just a cop. A couple of hot <laughs> Game of Thrones daddies. And... <laughs> uh, this, is a, uh, this is a tale of um, the true harrowing tale. Unbelievable tale. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, of the... Uh, I don't believe it. Of uh, <laughs> Lieutenant General Sir Adrian Paul Ghislaine Cotton de Vart. What? A.K.A. the Unbreakable Soldier, A.K.A. the Unkillable Soldier. Huh! Chocolate souffle? Saka souffle? <laughs> no, Sir, Lieutenant General, Sir Adrian Paul Ghislaine Carton de Vart. And he's uh, clearly uh, Dutch. Uh, so, uh, I'll tell you. Okay. De uh, Vart <laughs> was born uh, in Brussels. In nineteen in eighteen eighty, uh, I was close. Cinco was de close. Mayo, uh, <laughs> nice in Brussels <laughs> in eighteen eighty. Uh, into an arist- somewhat aristocratic family. Nice, uh, eldest son of Leon Leon Carton de Vart. Um, he was uh, actually widely believed. It was rumored that that he was the uh, illegitimate son of the King of Belgium, Leopold II. Who no, would, uh, who would be that? Would be the son of a uh, of our Leopold from the uh, uh, Princess Charlotte yeah, episode. Yes, a lovely, beautiful story. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so uh, Adrian's uh, dad was a lawyer, made a bunch of money. His mom uh, died pretty quick, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> off the board, well, really? fairly fast. Pretty quick. <laughs> and she got a queen from the board. At least she didn't suffer. She got hit by a table, <laughs> falling out of a two-story building. <laughs> Nighty night. <laughs> Uh, she, so he was sent to a Catholic boarding school. Nice. Spent some time there. Uh, hot dudes. And, uh, by 1899, uh, <laughs> when he was 19, he was attending Balliol College at Oxford. Hmm. Uh, and then October 11th, 1899, the, uh, the second Boer War started. And that was between the British Empire and the Orange Free State and the Transvaal Republic. So a lot of this... A lot of shit going on in Africa, you know. Uh-huh. Not a modern, yeah. one of the one of the last pre-modern wars. Mm-hmm. You know, Do you think of, after the first Boer War, they're like, "This is this is the one to end them all." The Boer War well, to never... end all Boer Wars. <laughs> I want more Boer War. <laughs> Fear. <Yeah>. Boer <laughs> War. Boer War. <laughs> war. <laughs> uh, oh wow! So uh, he. Um, <laughs> He knew when that war broke out, he knew once and for all that, quote, war was in my blood. 
oh, and he God. said cool. uh, he, he, he he was determined to to get into the action. I gotta get in the shit. He said if the British <laughs> if the British didn't fancy me, I would offer myself to the Boers. Holy shit! Really? I don't care where. No, I just don't care. I'm looking for a good fight. Yeah, um, That's something. He uh, he enrolled <laughs> as a volunteer, faking his age and identity. He said he was 25 when he was really 20, and he said his name was Trooper Cotton. Um, <laughs> And so he was. Uh, he was enrolled as, an, uh, as a as a military man. Is there any significance to that name at all? Trooper Carton. Well, his <laughs> name. It's just the two things his, he his saw la- when he was no, standing no, in his, line. His last name is Carton de Vart. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. And so, and Trooper is what he was. Yeah. Hi. My uh, name's Soldier. <laughs> <laughs> and um, this whole time, his father believed uh, that he was still studying in college. Um, he was dispatched to South Africa. And uh, his unit was crossing a river when he was shot by Boer commandos. He was shot once in the stomach and once in the groin. Oh! <laughs> yep. Sucks so bad. Oh, so did bad. It, and it sounded his dick, right? Yeah, it yeah. sounds horrible. It sounds <laughs> No, but did it sound... Oh, did it go in his pee hole? Yeah, 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 it did. It, it, it went. Whoop. It was Maybe like you know, you know the, the bidding of the uh, the beginning of the James Bond movies where it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's his pee. That's his pee hole. That's the origin. Now, luckily, oh, that the pee hole actually connects straight to the anus, so it shoots right out his butt. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Everybody thought he just. We're farted. gonna get a bunch of YouTube comments. Uh, actually, actually, the urethra does not go to the anus, you guys. And the piss. Yes, it fucking does. <laughs> the it's, piss is stored in the ass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Squirt is stored in the clit, yeah. according to my buddy Chris. Yeah. My piss is stored in John's ass. <laughs> you better believe it is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm you know, a wall. You know hey, you gotta pick him. <laughs> you owe me. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you're not mad. <laughs> uh, uh, one of the uh, one of one of his uh, <laughs> one of his uh, commanders asked if there were many boar around when he was. <laughs> Attacked and shot mm-hmm. twice. He said, "No, but the few that were were a very good shot." Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cheerio, cheerio. Uh, he was um, <laughs> he was in a, a military hospital convalescing, and his identity was discovered, and he was shipped back to England to his father. You're not a cart. <laughs> no. yeah. Wait, there's three kids in this trench coat. <laughs> the two, hell? Of them, two of them are shot dead. <laughs> <laughs> One of them's got a big hole in his cock. <laughs> And that's when that's when he joined a Cajun jug band blowing the <laughs> air off his pee hole. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Not just kidding about that part. Yeah, he's got yeah. the blues. So uh, he's discovered as being a youth. A youth. Yeah. Yeah, a youth and not being named Trooper Carton. And he was sent back to England, uh, where his father was like, what the fuck? I thought you were studying at the Oxfords. <laughs> <laughs> Snowball fight. And uh, I got lead in my dick, Dad. <laughs> Go back on the couch, you settled fuck. <laughs> I don't know. He probably said something like that. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, <laughs> after, after he patched things up with his dad, he turned, I think, 21 or 20. Uh, he, he turned of age. He, he was the age he needed to be. And uh, he, uh, re- he he decided he wanted to go back. Go back. So he uh, he tr- he hopped on a train and traveled first class. Yes, as, way, as you do to war. All yeah. the way to Cape Town. Yep. Visiting the bar cart frequently. Yeah. The whole way down. So much that he ended up in Cape Town, flat broke. No. And he was, uh, you know, brought into the army, the armed forces, and he was quickly promoted to corporal, which lasted 24 hours because he was demoted for threatening to beat the shit out of his sergeant. <laughs> uh, a lot of good choices. And by the end of that war, the Boer, the Second Boer War in 1902, he pretty much saw uh, no real action other than like snipping barbed wire in the field. Uh, but it did take two. Bullets took again one in the stomach, one in the PP groin area. Um, he applied to go search for Muhammad. The first bin- time, you mean? Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's why he went back. You can yeah. take the bullet out of the groin. Yeah, but yep, you know the rest of it. Right. <laughs> uh, he applied to go search for uh, Muhammad bin Abdullah, aka the Mad Mullah. Really? Uh, yes, this was the guy that started the Dervish uh, oh. revolution. Mm. Uh, all, the, all the whirling. And yeah, it's whirling and mm. dervishing. Um, but instead of sending him to British Somaliland, which is now Somalia, uh, they sent him to the what was then the relatively peaceful uh, Mutra, India. And uh, 
he really didn't do much there. He was really freaking out. He was like, I, I fucking signed up for war so I could go kill stuff. Mm -hmm. He was like a big hunter. He liked hunting pheasants and all sorts of game and shit. Yeah. And so, he, you know, he's got to kill something, right? Of course. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> have to. He, uh, he took <laughs> a liking, he took a liking to this game, uh, pig sticking. Huh. Do you know what pig sticking is? No. It sounds sexual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what polo is? <laughs> yeah. Polo. Well, yeah, of course, yes. Right? The whole, You're on a horse. Yeah, you're yeah, yeah, it's it's a like that, except croquet, instead of a horse. stick, it's a spear, and instead of a ball, it's a pig. It's pig. A pig. Yeah, and you stick them. You stick them. Stick them. So you get on a horse with your pals, stick and you uh -huh. ride around, and it's not like fucking pink, pretty babes. It's wild boar. Boar. Yeah. So he had his own little boar war. <laughs> sticking these fucking... What? You don't like that? Go on. <laughs> Is this boring to you, man? <laughs> How do you like that? Yeah. <laughs> Put that in your dojo and kick it, shithead. Put, Put that balloon in your dick. <laughs> <laughs> How does that sound? Oh, boy. Uh. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> So, check this out. I like you, Lloyd. <laughs> so, he's doing the pig sticking, right? He's got his own little personal one-man <laughs> boar war. <laughs> Get it, you little fucker. <laughs> <laughs> and in the midst of a very rousing uh, boar hunt, he Ooh. fell off the horse. Oh. And then the horse fell on him. Oh, oh. God. Then he, he was mistaken for a pig, and <laughs> oh. it stuck <laughs> in this pig. He broke his, uh, he broke his ribs. Oh, fuck. He broke his ribs and an ankle. And uh, so then he gets, he gets sent back to fucking military hospital, right? And he's again, he's like frustrated because he's not being, he can't kill anybody. Not killing anybody. This not killing, any killing fucking, humans, Like man. I'm killing any brown people or white people. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, you know, they got these fucking servants out there, right? Because mm. that's, it's British occupied India. So they mm -hmm. got fucking, you know, those yeah. little kids around and uh, servants. Slaves. Yeah. Uh, In little suits. Yeah, yeah, looking great. Little linen, hot yeah. little linen number. Oh, God. And uh, he, he's, he's, <laughs> he just starts throwing rocks at this servant. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this <laughs> fucking guy. He's like, he, <laughs> he's like pelting him with stones. <laughs> From his hospital bed? Yes, and then when he ran out of stones he could reach, he fucking shot his servant in the ass. Oh, my God. What? G it's his own servant? I mean, it's the servant assigned to him. Sure. Yeah, but shot him right. Why? Because he's a fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just, I just wanted to see if it was true. I could shoot you in the ass and come out the dick. <laughs> <laughs> Happened to me, but reverse. <laughs> Needless to say, he was demoted, and uh, he was given a reprimand. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, as he should be. Uh, shame on you, sir. <laughs> All right. What, but, are you some kind of sick maniac? Uh, right, right, good shot. Right, good shot, sir. Mm. Uh, he was about, 1904. He was sent back to South Africa. Oh boy! Mm -hmm. uh, he spent most of his time gambling, drinking, uh, racing horses, and hunting. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of, according to him, uh, in his uh, his his autobiography, Happy Odyssey, he had lots of liquid meals. As a, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a lot of uh, draft tales. Uh, Soylent, yeah. Uh, mm. yeah. Soylent. <laughs> little. Soylent, green. Soylent shakes. Liquid. Yeah. Green. People. <laughs> uh, but apparently he also like cultivated his physical strength, even though he's fucking basically just being getting drunk and hunting all the time. Mm. He said he could um, he could rip a, a, a deck of cards in half with his bare hands. Oh. He said he could? I mean, he wrote he could. Okay. Yeah. And I think other Those people. strong hands of oh, his. Boy. The handwriting was so strong. These, his hands once whipped a servant boy with a <laughs> yeah, stone yeah. from 14 yards. <laughs> I could strangle about a thousand servants in a second. <laughs> uh, when, he, when he got better, he, um, he swore allegiance to the king and me was made an official British citizen uh, within the British army. So, you know, before this, he was kind of provisional because he's, a, he's from uh, Boston. Yeah. Right? But now he was a British citizen. Um, he went back to the continent, the great continent of Europe, 
and uh, where he basically did a lot of socializing and yeah. playing of polo, which I guess is a reasonable facsimile for pig sticking in yeah, a pitch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, yes. Uh, traveling extensively. Mm-hmm. Uh, Probably a couple of cups of coffee along the way. Oh, well, yeah, yes, because nice, he did yeah. eventually went to Austria. Oh, yeah? Vienna. Vienna is a great coffee town. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, he's there in a pretty as a, the pretty hot time. Huh? Uh, oh, yeah, then 1904, so what, you know, everything's fucking hot going on in Austria at this time, especially Vienna, right? Right? Yeah, Fucking, Nazism, uh, Marxism, Mark Nazism. <laughs> uh, Hate that guy. Freud, Freud, coffee. A lot of mo- motherfucking. Yeah, oh god, <laughs> a lot of motherfucking. oh god. A lot of traps. Uh, a lot so of motherfucking. Hot. Yeah, a lot of cocaine. A lot of coffee. Was there a lot of coke around? Freud did a lot yeah. of chap. He, did he in oh. Vienna? Oh, oh, he was oh. chopped up he real nice. His coke. whole life. His whole life. You're joking me. He yeah. was the biggest proponent for cocaine. You got to get some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to get. He was this. a maniac yeah. for it, and like I love he chopping he, it up. He had like Freud had like I don't know like hundreds of quote unquote prescribed uses for it. And it was his, like... How did he write that list? What, what, what was he thinking? Was he... <laughs> but then, like, it was the one he didn't come up with was, like, one of his associates came up with, which was the only actual medical use for, which was for eye surgery. What do you do with it then? You make eye drops and you... Dro- numb you, it. You numb the yeah. eye. Oh, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Um, he never came up with that. <laughs> Fucking idiot. No, but, uh, like, 200 other uses. <laughs> I'm just I'm just really doing this much to get rid of this really stubborn erection. <laughs> Mom, leave me alone! Uh, the first 25 are getting rid of an erection. <laughs> but it, I have an erection all the time because I live with my mother. <laughs> Can you blame me? <laughs> nice big mustache on her. I hate my dad. <laughs> fuck you, dad. I wish he was dead. I could fuck my mom. <laughs> wish I had a bullet in my dick. <laughs> the ego. It's going to have to do all this coke. <laughs> the ego. That's good. There it is. It's hard to be anal retentive when you're shitting your pants constantly. You know what I mean? <laughs> So, uh, he traveled to Austria and Hungary. He uh, eventually married uh, a, a woman by the name, uh, well, an Austrian countess, actually. So Hell he, yes. Mo- moving up in the world. Frederica Maria Carolina, uh, Carolina, Henriette Rosa Sabina Francisca Paulina Fugger de Babenhausen. Jesus Christ! And that is pretty much all he talks about her in his entire autobiography. You're shitting me! <laughs> oh, that's really sweet. It's like 12 pages to get through All he the talks name. about is his wife? No, that's the only time she's mentioned. Oh, uh, the opposite of what I thought it was sweet. <laughs> it's, no. it's anyway, back opposite. to murder. <laughs> but it is anyway. <laughs> well, that's my anyway, wife. <laughs> back to my real love, the pigs. <laughs> yeah. She's got a lot of money. I don't know. She's cool. I guess. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. I love her. Whatever. So World War One breaks out. <laughs> yes. And he's on. He was on his way to Bridget, British Somaliland again mm-hmm. uh, to to lead a squadron of the Camel Corps. Uh, where they learned the camel clutch. Yes. Of course, yes. yeah. Well, the camel clutch, I believe, was an offensive. Yeah. yeah, yeah oh, it's yeah. offensive. Yeah, the camel clutch. <laughs> offensive. Oh, it's pretty. Offensive. It turned out he came back with a camel toe. It was all fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he he's joined. Uh, he joins to lead a squadron at the Camel Corps to hunt down the dervishes, uh, the followers of the aforementioned Mad Mullah. The Mad Mullah. Uh huh. Um, and but a finding, he was there and. When he found out the World War One had started, and he said like he felt like you know being at the equivalent of the kitty table, like yeah, he was like I'm here fucking chasing down these nobodies, these yeah. whirling dervishes, yeah. And meanwhile, the the Great War is happening back on the continent, right? right? Yeah. So yeah, poor guy, the new shit has come to light. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so like during during his his the squadron, you know, leading the squadron of the Camel Corps, they they stormed an enemy fort. And he insisted on in leading from the front, as he always does. Uh, he was shot three times in the face. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, the face is the dick of the shoulders. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, fa- the face is the dick of the body. <laughs> uh, he took uh, took part of his left ear, uh, and um, it hit his left eye twice. Like, it, it like, ricocheted. And... Oh. So, um... Yeah, well, yeah. So he lost... If you got coke in it, the, the bullet will come back for more. <laughs> Can't feel a goddamn thing! Even the bullet so he lost his it. eye and, and part of his left ear. Um, uh, a gentleman by the name of Lord Ismay in 1964 who served a long uh, carton of art in Somaliland described the incident 
Uh, <laughs> his face was disgusting. <laughs> it was all I could do to get away from him. He kept screaming for more, more. He didn't check his stride, but I think the bullet stung him up as his language was awful. <laughs> the, doctor, <God> suck! <laughs> the doctor could do nothing for his eye, but we had to keep him with us. He must have been in agony. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. He, uh, he also gave an insight into his innate, insate, innate love of fighting. I honestly believe that he regarded the loss of an eye as a blessing, as it allowed him to get out of Somaliland into Europe, where he thought the real action was. Very, very good. Yeah. Um, he was asking for it. He was... Uh, Begging for it. He was given the <laughs> Distinguished Service Order. Yeah. That's a medal. And... Um, <laughs> Took it out in a servant immediately. <laughs> Put him in the camel clutch. He, uh, breaking the child's back. He... <laughs> 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 Rip him! <laughs> Rip him, Carton! Uh, he returned to England where he hoped to get assigned to the Western Front of World War One. The Army Medical Commission agreed so long as he wore a glass eye. <laughs> yeah. Because we don't want to look at this. Shit, you, now you really shit. look like the dick of the body. <laughs> yeah. It's a trench in there. Uh, so he did agree. He put the fucking. Class oh, I. God, yeah. Is that less disturbing or more? I don't know. I don't know. I, I think it's four. probably back then. It's a it's a fifty fifty. But today, it's I, th- I find it's fine. Yeah. I don't even. I barely even notice it. Yeah. What, th- do you have one? Don't I? That's all you all the Columbo I watched. Oh, uh, yeah. Columbo's wasn't that bad because he squinted over it. Yeah. And he's always thinking. But the one, yeah, yeah. But yeah, and he's a private eye. He's a detective, right? <laughs> yeah. So it kind of makes sense. It does, yeah. yeah. This is my private eye. This is my public eye. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so stupid. I gotta return it. To the, libra- to the library. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What? You don't like that? No, no, I, I liked that a lot. it. I liked it. No, I was just embarrassed. The library? Yeah, you're embarrassed Very for me, right? <laughs> While riding in a cab in London with his fucking stupid glass eye, <laughs> he is like, ah, oh, this fucking shit sucks. So he ripped it out and threw it out the window. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> and uh, he started wearing his signature eye patch from then on, every day, every day since. Yeah, oh. that's, that's way better. Better. What I, is I, that? I eye patch is yeah. Dude, an eye patch is fucking dope. Yeah. Especially if your name is Adrian Paul Ghislaine Carton DeVart, yeah. aka the Unkillable Soldier. <laughs> Especially yeah. in war. Yeah, dude. I mean, he was described as looking like a like a very uh with his black eye patch and empty sleeve, Carton DeVart looked like an elegant pirate and became a figure of legend. Mm-hmm. That was another one of his contemporaries. Mm. Um empty sleeve? You'll get to it. Don't jump oh. ahead. You did. I know, but I wanted to, very, I wanted to just, read the quote. I'm just listening. <laughs> so in February 1915, he headed out for the Western Front to join with the 4th Royal Irish Dragoon Guards. And at the Second Battle of Ypres, uh, while on march to relieve an infantry unit, German artillery started firing on a ta 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 And shrapnel and splinters <laughs> from, his, from his wristwatch. Mangled his left hand. Oh god! So he got like hit for like the, the area was fucking getting hit with giant German artillery shells. Yeah, and shrapnel from the shells and splinters from his wristwatch like tore up his fucking left hand. Oh my god! All mangled and shit. Ah, <laughs> and, and all it left was like part of his palm and two fingers. Nice. And so you could do the rip them. <laughs> exactly. Or the yeah. fucking shocker. <laughs> uh, and uh, <laughs> the medic refused to amputate him. So he just ripped him off himself. Oh! Jesus! Probably bit him. Well, if you're ah. not going to do it, I'll do it myself. <laughs> and he ripped him off. So ah. one, eye, one eye, half an ear. Yeah. Probably bullet still lodged in his cock hole. Mm-hmm. Hasn't pissed in years. Oh, no. He <laughs> He's pissed on his head. Yeah. <laughs> He rips out the fingers. In his, in, he can't even do that. This is what it looks like. In his autobiography, he said, I asked the doctor to take my fingers off. He refused. So I pulled them off and felt absolutely no pain in doing it. <laughs> the man is an absolute bitch, I'm afraid. <laughs> MD. <laughs> the man was an MD. So it would later be properly amputated. Were, were they? Should they have been amputated? And the doctor was like, "No, I don't think we need to." I don't know. He's probably pissing his pants in <laughs> World War One, dude. I know I would be. I yeah. saw 1917. And a little squirted out. <laughs> I mean, you're fucking. You know. I'm not gonna cut him off. I, I don't know. He's wh- got the fucking minute hand and one finger. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, a fucking yeah. mess. It's a mess. <laughs> what time is it? <laughs> Where's the little hand? <laughs> it's all little. Over hands. there by your big finger, <laughs> uh, which is in your urethra. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds crazy. 
<laughs> it would later be properly amputated. Uh, he uh, <laughs> he later fought in the Battle of the Somme. Oh, was yeah. that his shooting hand? I'm sorry, I got uh, left hand. That was his, his left, left hand. hand. Oh, so that was okay, his he's right handed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, his uh, his uh, the men who served with him said that they routinely saw him pulling pins from grenades with his teeth and then throwing them with his good hand. Wow. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, seems like a pretty good way. Uh, in 1916, the assault of it. La Boucelle in France. What? He took charge of three units whose commanders had been killed. Jesus. They had no radios, no telephones. Or, Did he band them all together? Or pigeons, yes. <laughs> wow. So they, the, all their, their telephone lines have been cut. <laughs> radios wouldn't work. Come with me, boys. We're going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> I've got All one right. good eye and one good hand, <laughs> a good ball and a lead in my cock. Yo, this dude's crazy. He's got no dick, no eye, no fingers, no ear. <laughs> this dick is no motherfucker. I follow that man into hell, and I am. <laughs> so, <laughs> classic. He soldier. takes control. <laughs> classic <laughs> French soldier. <laughs> <laughs> Tone Loke in World War. <laughs> so um, he takes charge of three units because their commanders have been killed. He has no way to communicate. He acts as his own messenger and runs between each of the three units delivering orders, taking fire the whole time. Oh my God. This guy they loves event, war. He, they and now, where, is, where are they fighting right now? This is uh, the, La Boussel, France. So okay. This is basically the Battle of the Somme. Yeah, fuck. Which is a bloodbath. A bloodbath of staggering Hell. proportions. Hell. Yeah. And it, again, World War I is you know, the first modern war, they say, right? But barely. Yep. No antibiotics, no morphine, yeah. just machine guns. And and gas. And, and gas illegal and weapons. Yeah, weapons that became illegal later. Yeah. Um, it's bad news all around. Yeah, it's not. Trench it, foot. It's not this summer's hottest look. No, no, no. <laughs> trench foot. What, By tr Dwar. One eye, one hand, half a dick. <laughs> trench foot. <laughs> <laughs> These Watts parts. I feel like I've gained several hands. <laughs> <laughs> the way my fingers move is like a watch on its own. <laughs> it's a quarter past carnage. <laughs> Look, it's manual winding. <laughs> Man, all I have is time. <laughs> I call this one the second hand because it really is my second one, barely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> stupid. It's very stupid. So, for this, he receives the Victoria Cross. Uh, for this, for the for this gallant action, right? So, uh, for this was published in the London Gazette. Why he got the uh, the, the Victoria Cross for most conspicuous bravery, coolness, <laughs> and determination during severe operations of a prolonged nature. It was owing in a great measure to his dauntless courage and inspiring example that a serious reverse was averted. He displayed the utmost energy and courage in forcing our attack home. After three other battalion commanders had become casualties, he controlled their commands and ensured that the ground was won and maintained at all cost. He frequently exposed himself in the organization <laughs> of positions and supplies, passing unflinchingly through fire barrage and of the most intense nature. His gallantry was inspiring to all. Damn. So that was one of his first uh, medals. That he, second, that was basically a second medal that he got. Jesus. So that's the highest, highest British military uh, medal that you can receive for gallantry. Um, in his autobiography, he declined to even mention the medal. Really? He said, it had been won by the 8th Gloucesters, for every man had done as much as I have. That's all he said about it. Hmm, nice. Uh, he then <laughs> went Plus to... Plus I was married. <laughs> <laughs> Nice lady. Had a couple of kids. Yeah, I, I don't know who they are. She had a lot of names. It was tough. <laughs> I couldn't remember which one was the first one. Really... Constance or uh, Fountain? Constantly nagging. Am I just, uh, <laughs> am I just saying things I'm seeing again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is, are, honey, are, you, are you giving me a shopping list or are you reading your driver's license? Um, so then he was. Then he went off to the uh, the Devil Wood trenches, huh? aka the Devil's Wood, and I'll I'll send you a picture of this. It's a fucking nightmare. It's hell. Yes, it's, a, yeah. um, it's like a hell's kitchen. But he was uh, there. He was uh, shot in the head, 
<laughs> <He's dead>. <laughs> 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 you spin up, you piece nah, of shit! I didn't, you almost got me. <laughs> you almost fucking shot, got me. Shot in the head, straight <laughs> through the skull. No what? way! Get it out, baby. Was it so up a bullet? A, a, you know, a corner. <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, okay. And I don't think he does either. Uh, in subsequent battles, uh, he would be shot again in the ankle. It's like uh, through the hip at the Battle of Passchendaele. The Phineas Through gauge. the leg at Cambro <coughs> and through the ear at Arras. Jesus uh, Christ. At the, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, he was awarded the Belgian Croix de Guerre. That's the cross of war. <laughs> Checks out. In March 1918, <laughs> and was appointed a companion of the Order of St. Michael and St. George in the King's Birthday Honors List in June. Uh, what he said after in his memoir <laughs> and referencing uh, World War One, he said, Frankly, I enjoyed the war. Damn. 1919, he was assigned uh, to Poland as a military advisor uh, for the crown to advise Poland. This is 1919. So this these are what we call the interwar years in between World War One and World War Two. Um, and during this time, they would start having conflicts with Ukraine and Russia and Lithuania. Uh, that year, he survived two plane crashes. Jesus. The second plane crash <laughs> resulted in being captured by the Lithuanians uh. and spending some time as a prisoner of war uh, in Lithuania. Huh. Um, this, all, all this did was just embolden his support for Poland. Because he was like, these fucking Lithuanians. Hmm. Fuck these guys. They're treating me like shit here. I love these Polacks. Mm -hmm. I'm going to continue advising them in a, a, a military nature. Uh, Go, to he was... Go to war. <laughs> Go to war. Go to war. You should start a war. <laughs> He was uh, he because, was instrumental in a gun a gun smuggling operation. Really, getting guns into Poland by way of Hungary. Uh, uh, to the end of uh, defending themselves against everyone else. Everyone else. Lithuania, Ukraine, Russia. Yeah. Um, so 1920. Poland's war with Russia is intensifying, and uh, he was uh, he was on an observation train, military observation train, uh, kind of going through kind of disputed territory, and it was hijacked by Cossacks, Cossacks. by their cavalry. Cossack and, hijack, classic oh, maneuver. Oh, <laughs> cool punk band too. Oh yeah. Uh, he was. <laughs> He uh, he confronted the hijackers with his one hand and revolver. <laughs> they were revolted and ran <laughs> with a revolver. He fell off the train onto the tracks. No. He jumped right back on and continued the firefight and killed those motherfuckers. Oh my god. Yep. This guy loved war. He uh, he loved it. He he loved. Also, the Cossacks are notoriously pretty... maniacal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, like not an easy kill. No, yeah. it's like the fucking Bavarians coming into Rome. Yeah. It's like. Of, of, watch your fuck. Like this is, this is like wild ass. These Genghis slicks, these slicks are level. no motherfucking joke. They, these slicks are no motherfucking joke. That's exactly not, right. Not, not a joke amongst them. No. They're, they're not professional fighters, they, and they didn't know any they're, jokes. They're not amateurs either. No, no, like, exactly. They're, they take to it quickly. Yeah, <laughs> they seem to relish. They're genetically it. predisposed. <laughs> yes, yeah, more, more primitive. Yeah, or... right. <laughs> Do you like the taste of cum? Do you like the taste of cum, you like Cossacks? The taste of sperm? <laughs> oh, what do you prefer, sperm? Hey, Joe. <laughs> you have a fuck hey, with Blondie. <laughs> you, ever, you ever taste your own pre-cum, Joe? <laughs> I'm waiting for an answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait. <laughs> I got nothing but time, Joe. <laughs> time is on my side. No, you watch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he loved Poland and he, he stayed in Poland for a while uh, he, he, in 1923 he retired in Poland in 1923 in 1923 yeah, wait, and mind you he was he? born in 1880 so, oh yeah, so he's uh yeah he's up there. He's forty three. Yeah. yeah, and he's not re he exactly is retiring age, in Poland. God loved, damn it, that's he, it. He that's enough. He loved uh, to go hunting and drinking and <laughs> drinking while hunting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd really love to put my body back together. <laughs> <laughs> he really loved it. He he was having a good old time there. Yeah. Wait. So wait. So uh, I a bullet through the head, head. ear, ear. His twice. eyes. Uh, yeah. His ear was shot twice. Yeah. Uh, the or oh, the eye got eye hit got twice. shot twice. Yeah. But no, his ear was shot earlier. And then you said he got it again, Stomach right? and groin. Yeah, but, Stomach, but when groin, it, ear, bullet. But the ear was the same time as his eye, and yeah. then when you listed all those other things, you said... Ankle. His ear again. So, so there's that, ankle, so, there was a thigh. 
So he was hit in basically every part of his body. Yes, he was fucked up. So there was not two ear. No. Oh, okay. Because I heard just ear one, again. Just one. Well, maybe you. Maybe got you're repeating the maybe, original injury. Maybe okay. you got shot in the ear. No, I, I didn't. I, I'm very attentive. You can read it again. I and I'll, I'll be completely mouth. right. No. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, then, Sounds good. <laughs> so, uh, he, you know, he's he's in Poland for a long time, and then uh, 1939 comes around. Oh, I bet the he year? loves that. Uh-huh. And you know, Germ- <laughs> Germany, the, Germany. The year? Oh, not the band or what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the year. Yeah. Uh, What's up? We're 1939. <laughs> hope you guys, hope you guys like this now, one. Now, John, I said year, not ear. <laughs> uh, Gonna invade Poland? Watch me for the changes. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Third Reich. And the, uh, like try, try, wa- try and keep up, and also like watch me for the changes or whatever. Um. This is a bullet in me. <laughs> <laughs> so Germany's, you know, getting aggressive, uh, invades Poland, and and also they've made a pact. They've made a, a, a pact with the Soviets mm-hmm. to. So it's Germany and Russia are invading Poland. Still, the, Poland is still. Um, they still have an issue with this today. That Russia made a, a deal with Germany. Uh, but they they uh, both invaded at the same time. I never knew that. They well, they made a. Fucking non-aggression pact. Yes, and they they help them in their uh, assault. Wow. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't think it turned out well for anybody. <laughs> no, uh, it was actually a huge hit. Yeah, yeah. yeah the I invasion think he, of Poland. <laughs> even today, there are some people. You guys might be. This might be a little bit aggressive. You guys, but your kids are gonna love it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm sorry. I think even today in Poland, that some of the. Uh, uh, I guess Poland is slowly turning uh, a little right wing, yeah, and there's uh, some people. Are, I, th- I believe, if I have this correctly, some people, some of the leaders are uh, not. Or they're pretending that Russia didn't uh, make that agreement with Germany. right, and huh. a little bit of revisionism going on. Yes, yeah. Well, it's 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 happening throughout Europe. Is that the 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 most fascist leaning parties are all extremely uh, Russia sympathetic? Yes, because he's the new strong man on the block. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that band too. Strong man on the block. Yeah. On the block. <laughs> I'm Kim Jong. Uh, I'm the baby of the crew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm throwing a fit. Uh, I'm sorry. Please. No, 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 no. I'm no. gonna. I'm gonna have another test. So Germans invade Poland, and and Soviet forces overrun uh, the city where uh, where Adrian is. Oof. And uh, he's forced to abandon his home. Picked the wrong town. <laughs> but they never knew what they leashed. He, he wrote, first blood. <laughs> Fifth, six. You drew first blood, <laughs> comrades. <laughs> he wrote, quote, They took all I had. My guns, my rifles, my fishing rods. <laughs> fishing rods. My clothes, my furniture. But they could not take my memories. Also my wife's back home or whatever. And <laughs> also, whatever, <laughs> my kids or something. They could, they could not take my memories. But I really miss those fishing rods. Yeah. <laughs> they couldn't take my memories. That's good. His, uh... So he had to get out of there, you know? Oh, yeah, you gotta get out of there. So his, his car convoy was attra- attacked by Luftwaffe on the road. <laughs> uh, and the wife of one of his aides was killed. Oh, oh. Holy shit. He was at, uh... Damn it, she's riddled. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, disgusting. Uh, well, shake it, <laughs> shake it off. <laughs> Douglas. Oh, my God, she's just making a mess of the car. Be- Booze her out. <laughs> she's bleeding all over my, my rifles. <laughs> I have a wife somewhere. Go find her. Are you my wife? I don't... <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> I can't hear you. I've been shot twice in the ear. <laughs> Chocolate soup. <laughs> so he was in danger of arrest in Romania as he's getting out. He gets out uh, by aircraft with a false passport just as the pro-allied Romanian prime minister is assassinated uh, that same day. He gets out Damn. through, like... Who is assassinated? The prime minister of Romania. Oh, really? He, like, he's getting out in a very ass-backward way. Yeah. Um... He flees back to England, and as a 60-year-old, one-eyed amputee, he re-enlists in the military. Hell yeah. And put directly into active service. Hell yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, Imagine being his bunkmate. He's, he, gets, he gets in like real, uh, real tight with Winston Churchill. Uh, he, he, How? 
he's a fucking legend. At yeah, this point. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. I guess and yeah. they're both like sixty year old men. You know? Yeah, they both like to be naked. His, uh, he he had to go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like Winston to, loved being naked. Like to drink and be naked. You reach an age, I think, where it just. Damn like, it! I'm not putting the pants on. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. By the time I put my pants on, it's it's time to take them off. Again. <laughs> Well, now I have a pants on. Rubble will be in Liechtenstein. Riddle me this, <laughs> secretary. <laughs> His seaplane uh, was forced to crash land in Norway. Seaplane. It was attacked by a German fighter plane after it had crash landed. Damn. Everyone was like getting in the dinghy. And he was like, <laughs> I'm not getting in the fucking dinghy. We'll be sitting ducks. <laughs> so they all get out. And I think they're quickly massacred. <laughs> Spend he just war. waits in the wreckage he until the war. plane ran out of ammo. Damn. He just hides in the wreckage, plane runs out of ammo, and leaves. Yeah. Uh, Fuck he, the dinghy. He I'm gets out. out. Yeah, don't sh- you're not going to shoot him down plane uh, until you're done. He reaches his destination, and the troops that he was there to support, he realized that they are outnumbered and undersupplied. He leads them with... Uh, to escape over the mountains, and they made it back to Britain. Jesus, a bunch of lives. Uh, Winston Churchill appoints him personally to lead a secret mission in Yugoslavia. Hmm. Uh, I think to 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 get in with Lido. What's his name? To what? Lido, the guy who was the the Repu- the the Allied sympathizer in Yugoslavia at that oh. time. Ah, uh, yes, Lito. Uh, yes. Uh, that wasn't that. Um... You had a we had a guy that parachute paratrooped into. Yeah, Lo- was it, wasn't it like a, like a like a royal or something over there that was sympathetic in Yugoslavia? I think it was Lito. Oh, it's called Radistan. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, secret mission in Yugoslavia. Uh, but after a refueling stop in Malta, his, uh, the bomber aircraft he was in nosedive into the ocean. <laughs> Good God! As the plane sank, he swam to shore, carrying an injured crew member to safety. Damn. The 60-year-old one-eyed amputee. Yeah. Who had been shot through the head. Yeah. Well, I mean, half of that happened to JFK. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, he... where'd it get him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, except this guy lived 60. Yeah. yeah. He swam to shore carrying this injured crew member. Uh, the shore that they swam to was Libya, which was uh, Axis territory. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Italian-controlled. Uh, yeah, take a left. Yeah. They, they were captured by the Italians. They were sent to a POW ca- camp called Vinciliata <laughs> near Florence, and this is like a, it's like a cool, actually pretty cool castle. Oh yeah, the uh, Italians can help themselves. Oh, like, <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, I hope you like your prison. Uh, yeah. This is the turret. Uh, the dungeon is very great. Um, <laughs> welcome to prison. Uh, the average age of all the prisoners there it was all like. All high-ranking uh, British officials like like Adrian. Really? Yes. And the average age of the, these prisoners was 52. Jesus. Wow. They, the uh, oh, they took God. part in no fewer than five escape attempts. Hell yeah. Dude, I love a prison escape so much. Yeah. They, um, they dug, I think, a 60-yard tunnel. Wow. And they finally escaped in 1943. Their plan was to hide in the Italian countryside, posing as Italian peasants. <laughs> yeah. These 50, 50 and 60 Don't have old. a bloody pot to piss in, I'm afraid. Uh, uh, well, I don't speak a lick of Italian. Yeah. And I've got an eye patch and I'm missing a bloody hand. Uh, I'll never know. Bon no, bon I thought if I behaved like a savage, I'd blend right in. Uh, I'll uh, live, I'll live. Perhaps I'll grow a beard and <laughs> fuck my daughter. Or something. Uh, Do I look Italian now? Yeah, uh, you know Freud. Yeah, they were captured eight days later. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, excellent plan. <laughs> hey, these uh, peasants but, look but, funny. So that was March 1943. <laughs> in June 1943, Mussolini was ousted in a monarchist coup. Yes. So on, but and, and this this monarchist coup on the surface had said, you know, we're gonna honor our alliance with the Axis and all this shit, but really they were looking for a backdoor to kind of saved their country's ass by cozying up to England. Yeah, writing. Right, writing is on the wall. Right. So they are looking to negotiate an armistice with England and they've got these fucking five British high command oh, yeah. guys. Hey, <laughs> what better way? Uh-huh. We'll let these guys go. <laughs> yeah. Send some dignitary in there. Yeah. Unfortunately, Adrian shanked him in the eye immediately. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send we'll send you back some limoncello. Yeah, yeah. So they needed the inter- intermediary. 
Devart was an obvious choice. He spoke a bunch of languages. He spoke, he, he spoke fluent Arabic. Yeah. Uh, he spent some time because his Well, dad, Belgians always have the lock on, like— French, German, yeah, a English. Dutch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. he spoke a bunch of languages and— um, Sorry, I have something in my mind. When I was in Europe, I definitely, the, like, you know, I met kids from Germany, France, whatever. But the kids that I met that were from Belgium best o- always spoke the best English, yeah. like, hands down. It was yeah. crazy. Yeah. So his dad, uh, just a quick aside, his dad, you know, was this fucking badass rich lawyer guy who also ran, like, he was on the board of a, um, like, a train company in Egypt. They had moved to Cairo mm-hmm. after his mom died. So he mm-hmm. spent some time in Egypt, and mm-hmm. he also spoke fluent arabic wow uh, i don't know if he spoke italian but i wouldn't be surprised if he did yeah he acted as intermediary intermediary so when he was freed by this the just the, uses hands a lot yeah one hand, <laughs> hand. <laughs> well he's got three on this one <laughs> Me Italianos. Okay. he's always doing <laughs> it's like it's it's like he's only using half of the alphabet <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they take him to a tailor in Rome to get him some, you know, civilian, you know, clothes, I, I so got a, a suit and all that shit. <laughs> he didn't trust the Italian tailors, and he said that he didn't want to look like a gigolo. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to get his bloody Giuseppe and sons. I look like a bloody gigolo. <laughs> He uh, he uh, he relented, and he was actually once he got the suit, he was actually quite pleased with how it looked. This is actually pretty cool. Oh, actually I pretty like cool. being a gigolo. Wow, what is this, what is this polyester or huh. silk or something? Yeah. It's all white with gold cuffs. <laughs> it's, it smells like it's really dra- pretty cool. It smells like dra- <laughs> Definitely look like a peasant now. <laughs> they need. Uh, he ref- he returned to the UK uh, after this uh, for no more than a month. Because Churchill named him special envoy to the Chinese nationalist leader, Chiang Kai-shek. Oh. Mm. You know him. Mm -hmm. Johnny's Chinese. Of course. Uh, He befriended Chiang and his wife, uh, but when he meant a certain Mao Zedong, he couldn't fucking stand the guy. Really? Yeah. He fucking hated him. Uh, He he was an anti-communist himself, and... um, uh, historian Max Hastings says about Devart, he despised all communists on principle, denounced Mao Zedong as a fanatic, and added, I cannot believe he means business. <laughs> I cannot believe it. Uh, he told, after meeting with Mao, you know, Zedong, because they were kind of doing this you know, transitionary period, and he told um, British High Command that there's, there's no conceivable alternative to Chang. Kai-shek, as a, as a ruler of China, this Mao Zedong guy's a fucking idiot. Wow. Um, he met him at a dinner one time and had an exchange with him, and and Zedong was doing this like crazy propaganda speech, and and he just like interrupted him, mm-hmm. and he was like, "What the f- fuck are you talking about? You have no idea what you're doing. Mm-hmm. All you do is like following the Generalissimo's orders," and Zedong didn't like take him seriously and just kind of like stu- was stunned that he interrupted him, laughed, and kept going, uh, and so that he never really uh, spoke about him again. He just really fucking hated that guy. Huh. Um, he stayed in China until 1947. He was actually like pretty deep in the Chinese shit. Yeah, really uh, into that Chinese shit. Oh, I fucking loved it. <laughs> I've got one eye. You guys are Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. What? Very good. Very good. Very good. Uh, on on route home through French Indochina, aka Vietnam. Uh, uh, Cotton Devant, he stopped in Rangoon as a guest of an army commander. Um, he, uh, he was coming down the stairs when, quote, I hit my head on the wall, knocking myself almost unconscious. I broke my neck, crushed a vertebrae, and was very lucky not to break my neck. <laughs> he fell down the stairs. He fell down the stairs. I broke my back. <laughs> What do you mean? Man? My Spinal. back is broken. Now, what do you mean, sir? <laughs> what do you mean, Spinal. Sir? Uh, yeah, he slipped on like some coconut matting. <laughs> <laughs> slipped on a bunch of lube. Uh, fucking sounding his own cock. Fucking, <laughs> fucking oh, sick pervert. The loose. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, well, that's funny you say that. Oh. Because uh, he made it back to England mm-hmm. where he slowly recovered and went to surgery, and the doctors. <laughs> took, you know, they fixed him up, but they also took out a bunch of shrapnel. Old bullets and shit, yeah. yeah. Fucking giant uh, 44 caliber bullet in your hog, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it turns, turns out I'm actually 10 pounds lighter than I thought I was. <laughs> Mostly bomb. <laughs> I got a new watch. <laughs> and an inch shorter. <laughs> 
uh, he he was quoted as saying, um, "Governments may think and say as they like, but force cannot be eliminated, as it is only the it is the only real and unanswerable power." We are told that the pen is mightier than the sword, but I know which of these weapons I would choose. Mm. Uh, Easy for a one-handed man. His wife that he never talks about died in 1949. <laughs> 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 he, had a, he had like two kids with her. Two, doesn't ah, talk about them not at all. A word. Not, a, not a fucking word. Happy travels. He talks more about like a, his favorite piece of shrapnel. Yeah, <laughs> I, I call this one Victoria. Oh, yeah. he spent more time with the shrapnel yeah. than the kids. Absolutely. And I'm a like, big fan of these Chinese chaps. <laughs> I'm a daring man, and they're mandarins. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, okay. The Polacks too. They're okay. good fun. They're pretty good. <laughs> Funny, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. At the end of seventy one, <laughs> library. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. What's yeah. a man I'm daring? Not gonna, I'm not going to mock the disabled here. No, me. I will. <laughs> you bet I will. <laughs> Whatever it takes. <laughs> In 1951, at the age of 71, he married Ruth Myrtle Muriel Joan McKinchy. <laughs> Uh, Ruth Muriel Joan Mc Ruth Myrtle Myrtle Murray, Myrtle, like Myrtle Muriel yeah. Joan McKechnie McKechnie spell, spell that one <laughs> M C K E C H N I E McKechnie yeah. mm. a divorcee uh, known as <laughs> she also went by Joan Sutherland <laughs> yeah <laughs> easier much easier we'll call her Joan Sutherland from now on yeah. that's much easier. hello my name is Ruth Myrtle Muriel June McKechnie <laughs> aka Joan Sutherland oh. aka Samantha Speed <laughs> <laughs> this uh, is my son Kiefer <laughs> she was 23 years younger than him uh, oh. she she died at the age of 102 hell yeah Jesus Christ they settled uh, at Argonaugh House in County Cork Really? Oh. Ireland. Wow. Where he fished for salmon and shot at snipe. Snipe is a type oh, of bird. Yes. He died June 5th, 1963 in Cork with over 30 medals over the course of four wars in six decades. Whoa. That's insane. Um, and uh, I got a lot of this from uh, uh, Ain't That Interesting and History.com and War History Online. And the biographics. Uh, this guy was a fucking maniac, dude. Yeah, and I think war. this is in a time when you could love war. Yeah, there. You know, it's oh, funny, it's it, uh, nightmare scenario. Yeah, it, it, it's funny he ends up in Cork because one of the first things I thought of when you when you, you kick this off was a guy named Tom Barry that fought in the Irish Revolutionary War, and he started. Cork is the, known as the Rebel County because it was like the hardest for the British to hold immediately hmm. once they started doing guerrilla warfare. And Tom Barry was the uh, the main guy that had like the flying column system where you were just like on the road and ambushing cops and soldiers and all that stuff. But he, before this, he, he found it very hard to get into the IRA because he had served it, it, with the British in World War I. Uh -huh. And he said, he's like, I just wanted to see what war was like. <laughs> Which is right. like, yeah, yeah. you know... Uh, something you're like, what? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, but yeah, there is just some people that that love it. Yeah. And uh, I'm more th home out there than I am at home. Yeah. Well, and, uh, and those people, I don't think, get PTSD, by the way. The ones that are well, really, really. They get PTSD when they come home. Yeah, yeah, but I don't think they're like. <laughs> so they just stay out there. Yeah. I don't think they, uh, I don't think they even do when they come home because they're kind of maniacs and. Yeah, there's certainly, there definitely is a maniacal home. quality to them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's 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 fucking crazy, man. Um, but yeah, when you're at that point where you're like, I'll fight for the fucking Boers or the Brits, I don't care. Mm. Then you're just a total psychopath, and you really, you know, just love the fight, as they say in 1917. Yes. It seems like war introduced the like, it. It's a it's a it's its own Stockholm syndrome. You know, you you for some people, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, maybe they don't get PTSD, but the PTSD is that all they know how to do. Well, is yeah, the and war. then you know, after after like World War One, for instance, you know, you just got all these people coming home, and then it's all this stories and lore, and then that is like its own kind of uh, sales pitch. It's Civil War too. You know, it's like uh, people are like, uh, you know, the glory days type shit, and talking about it, and it's the like Civil War. All these boys meeting other boys and having oh, a grand time. Fuck. And boy, oh, boys. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, you know, war is one of those things where. You know, a lot of, uh, 
many men call just like the blitz right or we've talked about this bombing in dresden or the blitz in, in London. Yeah. like those were the best times because we all knew what we had to do and we all had each other's back even mm-hmm. though there was like imminent fucking death and destruction we were all yeah authentic community very clear on yeah. what we had to do and war is one of those times with with exception but you you know what you got to do right? yeah yeah and it do, it does do something you know where they they talk about like uh it's uh you, like the the spirit of camaraderie just comes out even in in crazy circumstances where absolutely where you would be like wouldn't you wouldn't be shocked if somebody acted cowardly but instead they still help another person up yeah and you know help you know take care of them because they know it's like together you know it's we got this the best shot we have you're yeah. right and that's a that's a feeling of um uh in, in those situations, those are people who are in control of the situation. Mm-hmm. And contrast that to Vonnegut, he's a prisoner of the Germans yeah. while, was it Dresden, was getting yeah. bombed. Yeah. And he's completely helpless the entire time. That's And from PTSD. that, he comes out and he writes Slaughterhouse. Mm-hmm. And Five. Uh, so, <laughs> he didn't even write the four, the four yeah, before. Well, the first four, but... Yeah. Maybe it's like Star Wars. We're waiting for the prequels. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, oh, that's true. But but his, <laughs> his 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 description of it is it's is not positive in any means other than you know very. Like, I was in jail stuff. and the jail was getting bombed. <laughs> yeah. I almost spoke German. It smelled like shit. It was bad. There's no coke. <laughs> There's no coke. I had, I had to make up stories limited. about aliens in my head to get through it. I wanted yeah. many got. <laughs> it's a big grilled cheese on the radiator. Uh, you know they, they they talk about you know PTSD in 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 modern modern military members of the military. It, it apparently. It happens more often in people who are in reactionary positions, sure, as yeah, opposed yeah. to those who are proactive. It's exactly, like, yeah. It's a maniac yeah. leaning head first is not going to get it. The guy that thinks twice about taking a human life yeah. is definitely going to get it. Yeah. Right. So there's, that's <laughs> yes. an interesting question. Yes. Is it is it because of the roles that select for a certain type of person, or is it is it the action itself? Right, so let's say you're a special ops guy. It's almost nature versus nurture. Right, like, are you, is it because you're the type of guy who would be a special ops tip of the spear guy that you don't get PTSD? Or is it because you are in control of the situation instigating it that you don't get PTSD? As opposed to being a guy who's, uh, you know, let's say you're you're defending a town yeah. and you get fucking ied or a suicide bomber fucking drives a truck in or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. So, and then, you know, Let's say you unfortunately you you end up having PTSD, right? Is it because you're the type of person to not want to be on the tip of the spear that you get it, or is it because just of the circumstance? And I think it's I think it's it is a situation where the circumstance that you are in has an effect on whether or not you get this post traumatic stress mm-hmm. disorder. I would say probably the circumstance brings it out of what kind, you know, yeah, what kind of person you are. Right. Um, but I think, you know, there's just a lot of people that are, you know, you, you feel like it's a very catch-22 thing where you'd be like, I don't want to die, but I don't want to kill. And that is enough to make a man mad, I think. Mm-hmm. Definitely, uh, definitely. But I, I, think, I think what the, what the, what the <clears throat> studies show is like, if you're the one doing this stuff, and as opposed to having stuff done to you, you're less likely to get. Yeah, it's, it's pieces, control. I yeah, mean, it's a control. control. It's an issue of control. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, but that's an interesting question too. Is like, yeah. Also, I mean, if you're the guy, you know, lead, the, you're signing up to be in fucking. Yeah, you're a Viking. You're if right. you're going in, you're like, I'm in control because I'm the one stealing and raping. <laughs> like, right. you know what I mean? It's like, oh man, at least at least my head's all right. <laughs> yeah. At least I'm obviously not mentally unstable. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of like you can't go crazy if you're crazy already. Right, but not, I think they're it's, not, they're it's not more of that. They're not all crazy. Like that's the thing. they are. They are. 
If you lean headfirst into endless murder, I would say you certainly well, are. I mean, what would you describe? It's not endless. What, what, it is endless. This guy wanted it to be. He fucking signed up when he was 60. Yeah, this jumping guy. Jumping on planes. But I'm speaking about modern. modern but, but, you know, in today's. Uh, so uh, a soldier who leaves the army because their time is up, and then they go back and join a private military force. and then Yeah, they join the Kurds the... and stuff like that. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, I, I understand a lot of times. The thing about guys going back is, um, I can't leave my friends, and that's a yeah. that's a different kind of thing yeah. than I just can't wait to kill again. Or oh, this is all I know. I think the the I just can't wait to kill again. People is a, it's a small <clears throat> subsect of the population. It is. It it very but, much is. But they exist. Definitely with, exist, without a doubt. and they're usually very successful. <laughs> oh well. Yeah, they got. I hope so. Yeah, you yeah, can't be one of these guys that wants to kill everyone. You can't even do it. Yeah, <laughs> you're probably gonna get killed pretty quickly and weeded out of the population. Uh. I think, you know, the true, you know, just blood-hungry people, they get sussed out pretty quick, and... They get made some certain type of soldier. Yeah. It's a hard, it's a hard thing to temper, though, because then it even goes up, you know... Because those guys are also probably, you know, they're not the brightest, and when you're, when you're somebody who's, like, a special operator, those guys are pretty smart guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's too much on the line... For them to spend, I mean, I think to train a Navy SEAL, it's some it, they it, they dump millions into you, mm-hmm. and so they're not going to dump. That's why they spend so much washing you out, you right. know, in boot yeah. in in SEAL training is just like we're not going to waste fucking money on you if you can't hold this log over your head for eighteen hours in tiny little hot khaki short shorts. Hey, <laughs> oh, God, we got we did. <laughs> hey man, we gotta have fun. <laughs> um, so those guys are are pretty high level operators. Uh, so, but there are certainly there are psychopaths, but um, I think I think they just throw those guys to cannon fodder. <laughs> no, I think those guys become the SAS and paras and all of those jumping out of plane type. Of, I mean, that's when you, but that's when you, what that's those guys. There's, I think there's I think we're talking about two different things: blood hungry psychopaths, and then people who like don't feel fear, or they are the the people to run towards an explosion. Right? There is sure, a certain part yeah. of the population. If there's an explosion in the distance, they're running towards it. Yes, right? And yes. you know, we wouldn't have survived without them. Of course. Right. I think there's a difference between risk. Absolutely. Risk averse people and like risk. You I know, mean, the the guy. Who and then there's and his, then there's just people who want to kill people. Yeah, mm-hmm. like he just shot. He just shot. But like those things kids. will always be populated by some of those people. Of for course. Sure. Yeah. yeah, they're everywhere. Oh yeah. Um, and you know that's that is like you know it's a pretty drastic personality switch too. So it's. You know, it's uh, it's hard to imagine being able to maintain like the camaraderie of a unit that needs to maintain camaraderie when you have people that are a very varied, yeah, uh, moral ground. I would say, but they obviously make it work. Well, I mean, not all, not always. Like, again, the guy who was uh, the marine who was pardoned, who just shot kids. Yeah, uh, his unit fucking hated the guy. Yeah. yeah, they they altered his scopes. Yeah, and his rifle so that he would miss. I think he was named <sighs> Seal. Yeah, yeah, and so they they reported him and nothing. Happened. You know, it's like so. And he was convicted of war crimes, then he got pardoned. Yeah, yeah, not a, not a good look. No, and then no, nope. no, Brad Blagojevich. Uh, yeah, so it's been a big. Day. I saw his wife on the TV. Blagojevich's <clears throat> wife? She looked good. And that's what Trump said today. He said his wife looked good. And he he ju- he commuted Blagojevich's sentence. I know that. Yeah, and he said yeah, he's a good. And then I saw his wife on TV. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Because she was, she was on like Fox. Or that, something that's what happened with the Marine. Yeah. He had family members on Fox. That's Jesus fucking Christ. It's the pipeline, John. I know you've got a terrible past. Just get some get some family on TV. You'll be fine. And you'll oh, be fine. Oh yeah, yeah. Get some. Wait, get what? Them <laughs> <laughs> what is that going to fix my past? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that's that's what I should do. Yeah. Yeah, you get on Fox. Get on Fox. Get some nice Blagojevich hair going. <laughs> yeah. Oh, halfway there. You, no, do, I do, you I do, do have some great good hair. I do. Yeah. I get pretty much sell some Senate seats. Pretty much half Blagojevich. Yeah. I mean, the guy sold a Senate seat. It was so fucking obvious. You're such a piece of shit. He sold Obama Senate seat. Yeah. yeah. Jesus Christ. This thing is going, pal. <laughs> I'm gonna need a lot of money. I don't know if you got it. <laughs> I got somebody else on the other line. Like he, well, he's a fucking piece of shit. Yeah. He sucks. He's, he's he was on the Apprentice. Most too. obvious, of course, he was. Yeah, that's 
Yeah, everybody from The Apprentice is getting pardoned. <laughs> it, it doesn't it, matter. It, it, it's such it's a, a it's, it's such it's such a surreal, <laughs> fucked up time. It's so stupid. It's so crazy. I can't. Stupid. I can't. I can't. It's yeah, just dumb. <sighs> Boy, how do we want to talk about it? What about uh, what do you think uh, Adrian would think of uh, how the world shook out? Huh? Adrian Vite. <laughs> I'll tell you how we would think. Now, um, how, oh, I think man. I would. He, I would. I think that. Um, let me think about that for a second. I think it'd be uh, really, really impressed with um, the progression of war mm -hmm. up until probably the war on terror started. Hmm. Um, because that's when you know war stopped being between. Well. <laughs> I, you're saying uh, it was let me finish what I'm saying <laughs> that, that it, it used to be for the vast majority of history between nation states mm. right mm -hmm. but now there's this uh, a over, war on, over to covert right, a war on ambiguous ideas mm. Gulf War did not happen it wasn't a war wars have two sides it was only on TV it didn't yeah, happen yeah. so I think he'd be perplexed as to like what is go what, what are we fighting and how you know, I, if I just, I just wanted to fight, I would have joined. If Britain didn't want to have me, I would have joined the Boers. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think this guy's gonna join ISIS, right? Right? Uh, because there's, it's just a different. I think he'd be very confused. Yeah. Uh, and also, you know, he was riding on horseback with a sword. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, but, I mean, he, could, he could have fought ISIS with that. Yeah, chop some fuck. Maybe he would join ISIS. Yeah. He wouldn't join ISIS. Off. Chop some heads off. Yeah. He could fight it. He could. Okay. No. Uh, yeah, I think that's a very, you know, we have, when was the last time Congress declared war? World War II? Fuck, probably, yeah. Yeah. So we haven't really had any wars, right? Yeah, officially, it's yeah. All no war. Police actions or yeah. right. conflicts. Authoriz authorization yeah. of military force. It's just, okay, yeah. so... I think he'd be, be very confused, but I think he would be disgusted at a uh, loss of like the uh, the not in the honor of soldiers, but in the honor of the nation fighting combat. Yeah, like the, like, the nature of combat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think he would think drones are really fucking gay. <laughs> yeah, uh, but they say American lies. I, I this guy's a maniac, dude. I don't know what he would think. What uh, what what? Where did you find him? And I just fucking saw it on Reddit. And huh. I was like, oh, this guy is fucking psycho. He just, the picture of him looks crazy. Yeah. He's got a, no hand, mm -hmm. an eye patch, mm -hmm. and like scars everywhere, and metals just adorning his shit. Right. And a barbershop mustache. Mm -hmm. Boar. It's incredible. I mean, he really he reminded me of Cap Mad Jack Churchill. Yeah, for sure. It's this guy who's like, I'm doing this. Another guy with I, an eye patch. I love it. Yeah. A lot of a lot of these guys had plus the, the whole Doctor Manhattan angle with the watch exploding. And yeah. so on. <laughs> the first thing I learned to do, Adrian, was put myself back together. He was nice. He's talking to himself. <laughs> 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 I, felt, I felt pain for the last time. <laughs> yes, it was 1904. Uh, Fred again, see, the tachyons are blurring, plus I don't have an eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, uh, I, I don't know how it happened. Like, you know, no antibiotics. I know. Yeah, it, it, I know. It's, yeah. Just, yeah. and you know, again, you know, arms or bullets and stuff are, are different now. They're de definitely better. Sure, he wasn't the cleanest guy on earth. No, no, no. All yeah. that alcohol in the blood kept it nice and sanitary. Maybe, sure. maybe, yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe an auto brewery syndrome. Who, who knows? Maybe, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Who's uh, to say? <laughs> I just, it, so many people died in World War One too, just of like dumb shit, like infection. Falling into a fucking wet you're pile in a, you're, of goo. Yeah, you fall into a wet pile of goo. I know it sounds good to you, John, but it's bad. <laughs> it does sound good to me. And you get trench me. foot, and then it gets gangrene, and you gotta you die. Yeah. And this guy gets shot in dick, stomach, ankle, hip, thigh, head, face, ear. Mm -hmm. Not a not a staph infection, not an athlete's foot. Yeah, loses a hand, rips off the fingers, and he's just like, I I lived till I was like fucking eighty. Yeah, married a couple of ladies whose names I can't remember. I have no idea who these people were. Happy travels. I don't. It's um. <laughs> It's pretty wild. I don't know what what would go through his head about today. Mm. Um, I think this guy probably he seemed like an honorable screaming. person. I mean, he clearly has a, a crazy acts of valor and for sure saving yeah. his his compatriots. But uh, 
I don't know, man. I, I can't put myself in that situation. Yeah. There's well, very, there's or very, in his head. He's a total there, psychopath. Yeah. But even with that hole in it, I don't think I can get in there. <laughs> uh, you know, there's very few people I want to kill. Do you know anything about his uh, autobiography? Like, is it, uh, is it a, like a long book? Is it a... It's called Happy Odyssey. Oh, oh Happy Odyssey. And Happy Odyssey. Yeah. Yeah. Straight into the fucking <laughs> devil's fucking asshole yeah, of de- war. The devil's wood. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, From what I read about it, I didn't have time. I, I put this one together really quick. because I Sure, of course. It. Yeah. But uh, it's pretty, he, that attitude that I read to you, like, I really enjoyed the war. Yeah. I had war in my blood. Yeah. I ripped it off. I didn't feel any pain. Yeah. I don't know my fucking wife's name. <laughs> <laughs> he was just. I don't know where wives come from. <laughs> I don't know what they eat. I didn't know one thing. <laughs> I love war. <laughs> I got to hand it to her. Your war. <laughs> war. I, uh, I, I read Patton's book. And Patton has a lot of the, yes. the I love yes. war stuff. Yes. And there is a thing of like, you know, you, um, you know, it's, you know, you, like the guy's going to rise up, you know, up the ranks and everything because he's a total psychopath. And, you know, he does run in head first. And you really need those guys to run in head first so that people follow them. Yeah. You know, and um, even if they're not true north, they're headed yeah, in the right direction. And like, it's you got to do something. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's it's, but it's also that thing of you got to temper those guys where when you're winding down the war because they they, they know, don't want it. They only know, know forward. Some it, and they the don't know the neutral. Movie is some some people just want the the, the fight. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, it seemed like he was pretty okay with going home, uh, as long as there was some pheasant to shoot and some pigs to stick. Yeah, absolutely. But, I'm on the side of the pigs, really. <laughs> yeah. Boars. <laughs> Big surprise. I know. <laughs> Uh, big surprise! <laughs> big surprise! Um, yeah, it uh, it's tough to just put yourself in that situation. Like you know, maybe we've been conditioned to see that the war is really fucking hell. Uh huh. I don't know if conditions. I mean, uh, it's not conditioned. Maybe maybe we're paying attention and understand <laughs> okay. that it is. You know, it right? gets a bad rap is war. <laughs> well, I mean, if you on the surface it's glorified video games and movies, it's very much right? glorified. But if you, if you pay think it's any good. attention whatsoever, people like us and people that listen to this show, mm-hmm. you know that it is no motherfucking joke. Yeah. yeah. Right. But at this point in history, for him as a man born in 1880, war was a rite of passage. Yeah, for, for the sure. vast, the great arc of human history, mm-hmm. every man went to war at some point. Yeah, right? yeah, or, and, and, and in, it, civil, in civilized history, you're right. And it ironically, it usually, civilized. Yeah. it usually brought about some kind of you know great change or or theoretical advancement for the nation state. Right, um, and it was for some sort of. Resource or uh, yeah, there was a cause the, or whatever sounding, behind it. Yeah, right. this is the sound. <laughs> yeah. sounding. Gentlemen, these men have lead, and that lead we need to smelt in a very smooth, long rod so we can sound it into all your urethras. I'm afraid my penis is turned into something more of a vagina. As a matter of fact, well, that was just fine. That is strange turn of events, but none that. I'm too displeased about. That. And without these long cylindrical tubes of lead, I'm afraid we're going to be flaccid all day. Now I store. Now I store this. Squirted my clit. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, my wife doesn't know what to do. My wife? <laughs> Who is she? I met her tonight. <laughs> twelve, uh, twelve days. So, I think you know this guy. Obviously, from a different era, right? But that I think maybe that wasn't so uncommon back then. No, it was not to no, be no, of no, that no, mindset, no. especially if you're an aristocrat. I mean, the fucking um, you know Roosevelt. Sure, like, that guy was. In love with the uh, it was romanticizable. Yeah, until his kid died. <laughs> well, yeah, but, but, he, he, but yeah. it was because his parents especially bought him out of war. Yes. That yes. he was really hung up on it yes. and then very gung ho to overcompensate. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there was, there was a lot of, of that. Like, I do think Tom Barry was a guy that was like, I just wanted to see what war was like, you know? And, you know, then when he comes home and he, you know, he fights, you know, for the, 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 the IRA and the Revolutionary War. He knows all the shit. <laughs> he's like a, yeah, he's a yeah, good yeah. revolutionary fighter because he studied. He was in the army. Yeah. He knows how war works, and then he was you know a very effective leader. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it does have you know ob- obvious benefits yeah. um, that aren't all necessarily about um, you know just waging war needlessly and <laughs> taking over other countries. You know. Yeah. Um, but that was that was absolutely fantastic. Profile. That was great. Yeah. Crazy man, huh? Yeah, yeah. I really really liked that a lot. I don't want to get shot. 
Yeah, I don't either. Uh, but yeah. also, I don't want to get. And I'll tell you what. Now I don't want to be a servant very much. Ooh, that's a nightmare. Yeah, <laughs> Just kidding. How about you be my pig and I stick you? Oh God! Let me have it. No. What? I'll wear an eye patch. <laughs> Yo. Oh, cool. He's a pirate. Yeah, well, my hand's gone. <laughs> I need you to apply lotion to my balls, which have bullets in them. Oh, <laughs> oh that's what those are. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, the Watchman is mangled ass hand. Jesus oh, Christ, that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Time heard. conquers all. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I was um very disgusted by that, but that is that is really really good stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. what the fuck happened? Was his watch obviously gets hit by shrapnel and then just splinters into his hand yeah. or whatever? Yeah, it becomes more of a problem. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. You never expect your own watch well, to turn got all on those you. Gears in well, it's there. Turning. Oh yeah, the gears. It's turning. Time. Gears of war. Yeah. All right, I think we're going to call it there. Fantastic. Aaron, fantastic profile. Thank you very much. I'm going to say goodnight. My name is John Fahey. I'm Aaron Pita. My pursuit. Good night, everybody. We love you. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs>